Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is uh, the second video on the June 2018 paper 1 2, and we'll be discussing question 22 to 40 in this uh, video. Starting with question 22, the diagram shows the external view of a brain. Which part of the brain is concerned with thinking and making decisions? Now, that of course is this entire part, which is called the cerebral cortex <clears throat> or the cerebrum. So that is A, B is the cerebellum, which controls posture, coordination, and balance. Posture, coordination, and balance. C is the, looks like D, looks like the, med, uh, the medulla, and C, of course, is the spinal cord. So this is what looks like it. I don't know if it could be something else, but uh, that's what it looks like. And uh, it was a sort of a side view of this, so it's a little confusing for the for me as well. Then coming on to question 23, and diabetes glucose appears in the urine. How does insulin prevent this? Insulin prevents this by increasing the uptake of glucose into the body cells. So the glucose is taken out of the blood and then stored in the liver as glycogen. But in diabetes, poor people, these insulin is not produced. So the glucose is very high in the blood. It's not used by the body cells. It's not taken up by the liver and converted to glycogen. So there's too much glucose in the blood. And when there's too much glucose in the blood, that results in the glucose being filtered out, but it is unable to be reabsorbed. So that is why it starts to appear in the urine. Question 24, which bones meet at the elbow joint and what kind of movement do they allow? So as we all know that this is the humerus and then the humerus and then this is the ulna. I always say it makes this U-shaped. So this is the ulna and then of course we have the radius here. So this is the radius. This is the U of the ulna. So the bones which meet at the elbow joint are the ulna and the humerus. And this is the humerus, which sometimes students call the funny bone, but it's not that humerus. That humerus has a separate spelling. And this allows the movement only in one plane. You can only straighten your arm and then bend your arm at the elbow. So it's only 180 degrees. Then coming on to question number 25. What are some effects of using heroin? Seizing its use causes withdrawal symptoms. Yes, that's correct. Injecting it can lead to AIDS. Yeah, because if you share needles, only then it's going to lead to AIDS. That is why it stimulates the nervous system. No, it is the opposite of that. So considering uh, seizing its use causes, yes, if you stop taking heroin, it causes uh, withdrawal symptoms. Injecting it can lead to AIDS because if you share needles only, then it's going to cause AIDS. So this is what you had to understand in question 25. In question 26, antibiotics such as penicillin are produced with fermenters. Which substance is not needed? Yeah, well, you don't need carbon dioxide because the fermenter is going to, the microorganism like the fungus is going to respire and it is going to use up oxygen and uh, produce carbon dioxide by aerobic respiration. So it's not going to use the carbon dioxide. What we need is the mineral ions, oxygen and sugars because that is food for the fungus penicillium which is going to produce the antibiotic penicillin. Then we come on to question number 27. Some young plants are put into the soil and grew well for a few weeks. Fine, put into the soil, grew well for a few weeks. They then began to show signs of disease. Samples of the diseased leaves were examined using a microscope. Which observations of the organism causing the disease show that it could be a fungus? Long and thread-like structures, yes, those are called hyphae. Chloroplast not present, yes, fungus does not have any chloroplast, so that was correct. Cell walls are present, yes. Cell walls are present made up of a nitrogenous polysaccharide called chitin. And you spell it C-H-I-T-I-N. C-H-I-T-I-N. And that's called chitin. 
nuclei surrounded by a membrane yes that was correct so they are thread like structures chloroplast are never present in a fungus cell wall is always present nucleus is always present it's a eukaryote so nuclei are always present question 28 the graph shows changes in the population of plant and animal planktons in a lake so let's now look at it with a different plant planktons let's color it red so the plant planktons are here and you can see their peak here and then you see it peaking peak here and then it decreases and then it's like this and then you can let's give it another color the animal plankton and the animal plankton you can see is following the peak there's a peak much a little later and then this is, this is another peak just after that so it is sort of following it consider the following statement in relation to the data provided by the graph population changes in animal planktons lag behind similar changes in plant plankton because the animal feed on the plants into which category does the statement fall into which category does the statement it is a reasonable interpretation of the data the others are all wrong it's a restatement of the data not an interpretation no it is contradicted or not supported by data it does supported by the data more, more data required in order for this interpretation but i think it's pretty okay it's about a one year's data from january to december and that is quite quite a sort of a, uh, enough data to really make some uh, interpretations it's not two days or five days or 10 days it's it's a whole year january to december so this is how you had to answer this question now coming on to question number 29 a food chain is shown grain uh, so grains will have to be more than insects will have to be less than small birds will have to be lesser so you can see this is decreasing and then the owls will have to be lesser but then of course we get the lice and the lice have to be a whole bigger now this was of course in the reverse this was wrong then this was a gone weird because the grains and then the insect then suddenly this was decreasing and then this was the grains had to be more in number because the plants have to be more in number to have a large number of animals living on it so this has to be more than the so this was the producer and this insects is the primary consumer so that had to be less than the grain so that is why this was the correct answer to it then coming on to question number 30 in the carbon cycle which process returns carbon to a food chain returns carbon to a food chain food chain means it would have to be with the producer so photosynthesis would take the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and put it into the plants as starch and then it would be of course a producer and then of course the herbivores would be eating that and the carbon would be recycled and that's why we study the carbon cycle then coming on to question number 31 which action will not help to reduce the spread of the malarial vector in the human population see using antibiotics to kill the malarial parasite sorry the malarial parasite is not a bacteria it is plasmodium and that is a protozoa it is not a bacteria so plasmodium is not a bacteria so do, do we do not give antibiotics in malaria and malaria is not a bacterial disease it is caused by plasmodium and that is a protozoa and we would have to give uh, medicines like chloroquine to kill the plasmodium and coming to question number 21 which change would lead to an increase in biodiversity in an area now the rest of it are all decreasing biodiversity because you are building large number of blocks of family dwellings in the city so you are cutting down the forest so this is really decreasing biodiversity increasing the number of cows in a pedigree herd that is not increasing the biodiversity you are increasing just one type of cows replacing a forest with large palm oil plantations where you would kill all the birds which nested on the forest trees and now you are just having a monoculture which is a large palm oil plantation so 
stopping fishing in an area of sea for several years yes because then the fish populations would recover because you'd stop fishing you'd stop taking out the fish and selling them in the market and then of course taking out even the tiny fish which were going to breed next year so that was the way which you could have increased the biodiversity in an area in 33 the diagram shows the chromosomes in a cell so you can see how many there are one two three four five six so which diagram shows is a product of one division of the cell by mitosis. So you have to have two cells. So there has to, after the first mitotic division, two cells. Now in C and D, there are four cells. So that was totally wrong. In A and B, there were two cells. So this was incorrect because the chromosome number remains the same. Genetically, it should be the same because that is the definition of mitosis. It produces two genetically identical daughter cells from the original cell. So the original cell divides into two and forms two daughter cells. 34, the diagram shows a section through a flower. You can see there is one, two, and three. Which statement is correct? Fertilization occurs at one. No, that is where the pollen lands on the stigma. Haploid gametes are produced by two and three. Yes, that is correct. Pollen is transferred by insects to three. No, pollen is transferred to one on top of the stigma. The pollen grain fuses with the female nucleus at two. No, two is the anther. That's where the male uh, gametes are produced, which is the pollen grains. So that was all uh, a bit confusing, but I think it was very clear. They were all very, very wrong. 35, the diagram shows a baby about to be born. One appears to be the OV ducts, 2 is the placenta, 3 is the uterus, 4 is the cervix. So which labor st structures are the cervix and the uterus? That was 4 is the cervix and 3 is the uterus. So a simple question, not a very difficult question at all. Question 36, a person's basal body temperature is their temperature when they first wake up in the morning. In women, an increase in blood progesterone concentration causes a small rise in basal body temperature. A small rise in basal body temperature. The graph shows one woman's basal body temperature over a period of 28 days. And you know when ovulation occurs, corpus luteum is formed and that is produces progesterone. So you are now to correlate the progesterone with the ovulation. So in which day did the woman ovulate? Now they've only given you four choices. Day one here. Day 5 here, day 11 here, you see now there's going to start increasing. So the 11 was the only possible answer. The other answers were all rubbish. Day 27, so it's decreasing. The new cycle is about to start. Day 1 was the same. This was a slight fluctuation which occurs. But then at this point, you see there is going to this increase. So this is where the, this is the point where we were going to start ovulation. So this was what you had to understand that once ovulation has occurred, corpus luteum is formed and corpus luteum starts to secrete progesterone. And that's what they were asking you, blood progesterone. Uh, question 37. The diagram shows a pair of chromosomes from the same cell. Now we have P here. A gene is found at the point labeled P. In a heterozygous situation, what will be found at the equivalent portion, position labeled Q? A different allele of the same gene. So like for instance, if you have IB here, then you could have IO here, or you could have IB, IB, but then they said it's an heterozygous individual. So it had to be either IB, IO, or IA, IB, or IA, IO. Heterozygous, or even IA, IB. So it has a different allele of the same gene. Gene has to be the same, but the allele could be different. The alternative form of the gene. 38, the table shows the variation in foot length and number of students. So foot length is 20 to 20.9. There was zero, 21 to 21.9. Five students, 22 to 20, 12 students, 12, 23, 15, 24, 17, 25, eight, and this size, there were none. So none in this size, none in this size. Which row identifies this type of variation and states its cause? 
type of variation was continuous genes and the environment so both in a continuous variation genes and the environment both have a say in it like for instance you have the gene for tall height but then you didn't get enough diet so you probably would not be that tall or like stem length in plants they did not get enough night light or they did not get enough nitrates from the soil so they will not grow tall coming to question 39 which is a genetics question which is always troubling you all uh, the color of the fruit of tomato plants is determined by alleles of the same gene a tomato plant with red fruit was crossed with a tomato plant with yellow fruit of the offsprings 26 plants had red fruit and 24 had yellow fruit now you know whenever the ratio is 1 ratio 1, it is a heterozygous crossed with a homozygous recessive. That is the only time when you get this ratio, roughly 1 is to 1 ratio. So three explanations were suggested, both parents were homozygous. No, that's wrong. As you can see here, this is a heterozygous crossed with a homozygous recessive. One parent had two recessive alleles. That's correct. One parent did have two recessive alleles. And one parent was heterozygous. That is also correct. One parent was heterozygous. So two and three was correct. But please understand this question. It's a difficult question. Last question 40. Diabetes may be treated using insulin from genetic engineering. Where is the insulin produced? You know this is a bacteria. And what we do is that we change the plasmids and we put in the insulin gene here in the plasmids. And then, of course, you know there are ribosomes here. And the protein is made on the ribosomes. So where is the insulin produced? In the bacterial cytoplasm. Because you have to know is that the protein is made by the bacteria inside its cytoplasm where the ribosomes are present. So it's not bacteria does not even have a nucleus. Not in the human liver, not in the pancreas, because genetic engineering is that we change the Gen genetic DNA of the bacteria and we put in the gene for insulin and that results in the production of insulin by the genetically engineered bacteria. That finishes this and I hope this has been a helpful uh, exercise and uh, this helps you all to understand the MCQs a little better. This is the second video and it covers uh, questions 22 to 40. And thank you very much and uh, the best of luck in your exams.